What is up, pre-med stars? Dr. Dale, the author of How to Raise a Doctor and the author of Pre-Med Mondays, and you are listening to the Pre-Med Mondays Mentoring Podcast. Really excited. Today, we're in week six, and we'll be talking about five things that can prevent you from becoming a medical doctor. That's right. Five things that can prevent you from becoming a medical doctor. Check it out. Happy Monday, Pre-Med Star. Glad for another Monday. I'm really excited. It's going to be a good week. So we're in week six of the podcast. I hope you guys had a chance to check out the previous five weeks. You know, I like them all, but last week I would say was probably one of my favorite ones just because I love these things like success and personal development. And again, I think those things are absolutely essential for people to be successful in life. You know, you have to take time to think about those things. So if you miss any of the weeks, go back and check them out. But definitely if you missed last week, go go back and listen to that and really pay attention and and try to implement some of that stuff. I think, you know, make us it'll make you a little bit better for it. All right, flip it in my book here again. Week six, we're talking about things that can prevent you from becoming a medical doctor. That's key because most of the time we spend thinking about, okay, what things do I need to do to get there? You know, you got to shadow. I got to I gotta do some research. I got to volunteer. I got to get the grades. What things do I need to do to get there? But what we don't spend enough time on is thinking about what things can prevent me from getting there, right? And a lot of these things are going to be things that will prevent you from being successful in life in general, but specifically as a pre-medical student, I want you to really stop and think about these things we're going to talk about here and say, okay, do I have any of this in my life? And how is this affecting me on my pre-medical journey? And how is this affecting my ultimate goal of becoming a medical doctor? Because a lot of pre-meds struggle with some of the stuff I'm going to tell you right here. And goodness, normally I don't like to cover all five because I, I don't want to rush and I want to make sure we don't make these podcasts go so long because again, Monday morning is meant to be a quick hitter, get you pumped, give you some mentorship for Monday morning and get you out the door for the rest of the week. But, you know, these are good. So we'll see how many we can get through here. I don't rehearse or any. I just grab my book and I start talking. So whatever I say is what's coming out. All right. The first one to talk about is it's the biggest one. It's the biggest one. You know, I've been mentoring for quite some time now. And this one, it always comes back to this. And it's lack of confidence. Lack of confidence is the first one. I would say it's the most dangerous one. People struggle with this, particularly pre-medical students struggle with this so much, so much. Do I have what it takes? Do I have what it takes to become a doctor? Right. And that's a barrier that you have to overcome. And I know a lot of the students on Pre-Med Star message me and a lot of people struggle with this. Just so you know, if you send me a message on Pre-Med Star saying, hey, Dr. Dale, you know, I struggle with this confidence thing about I don't know if I have what it takes. Just know that you're not alone. It's something that pre-medical students deal with. And it makes sense, right? Because you're talking about, hey, I'm going to become a medical doctor. I'm going to be taking care of human life. And I'm, I'm trying to get into medical school against all these other people who I look at and I just think they're geniuses. In my head, all these other people are so smart, smarter than me, right? That's what you're thinking in your head, not realizing that they're saying the same things that you're saying, not realizing that the same little doubts that you have in yourself are the same doubts that they have in themselves, right? But easily, I would tell you that this is the most common reason why most pre-meds don't achieve their goal. At some point, they lose confidence. They don't think they can have it. And I'll tell you how it often happens. And I see this happen over and over again. Students get to college. They're doing fairly okay. Test comes. Boom fail a test or boom, get a D, get a C, get a lower grade than they're used to, right? And that just completely rocks your boat, completely rocks your boat. That messes with your mind. Then you really start asking yourself, wow, am I really cut for this? Man, this is just bio one or chem one. And and, and I'm struggling with this already. Am I going to be able to make it? Am I, am I smart enough? Maybe I need to go find a different field. And what's even worse is sometimes you guys will go talk to people to get guidance or advice or whatever from you know fellow students or whoever you go talk to. And people will start putting this stuff in your head like, okay, maybe try doing something else or try looking at this career. And from an early stage, a lot of you guys will start doubting yourselves. And that is the absolute wrong thing to do. Wrong thing to do. What you need to do in those situations is say, okay, man, that was harder than I thought. Let me go find where I can get somebody to help me and I can build my confidence back up. That's what you want to be doing, okay? It's so easy to get trapped in this box early, this mental prison is what I call it. You're in this mental prison. And you're trapped and you don't realize that there's other things you can do to be successful. You don't have to do it the same cookie cutter way that everybody does it, right? Be your own individual and find, think, hey, I can do it this way. Or, okay, I did bad on that test. Let me change my study habits up. Let me change my game plan up. Bada boom, bada bing. Next thing you know, whoa, I got an A on the next test. Or it might take some time, two, three tests. But the idea is you can't have this one hit or quitter that just ruins your confidence from the get-go. Even if you do bad, you have to find ways to stay proud and keep your confidence. It's kind of like in basketball, right? And I was thinking about Reggie Miller. They talk about Reggie Miller would shoot himself out of a slump, right? Because in basketball, you you get in the zone or you're in a slump sometimes. If you're in a slump, you're missing all your shots. 
And they would talk about when Reggie Miller back in the 1990s was playing and he'd be missing all these shots. He'd just keep on shooting. He wouldn't stop shooting. Even though he was missing, he was keeping He was like, I'm going to hit the next one. I'm going to hit the next one. I'll hit the next one. He's just missing all these shots. And eventually he hits the next one. That gives him more confidence. And he hits the next one. And then he's in the zone and hits like 15 points straight. That's what I want you guys to be like as pre-medical students. You might hit some hard times. You might get in some slumps. But I always have this, it might be the next one mentality. The next one might be the one to get me out. The next one, next one. Just wait for that home run to come, right? Because once you hit it and you build that confidence up, you're going to be unstoppable. You'll be unstoppable, okay? The second point, it sounds kind of funny, but it's overconfidence. Overconfidence. This is more about pride. Don't be too prideful to ask for help. Don't be too prideful to ask for help. Because what happens, again, is you might not do too well on the test. You might say, oh, you know, I probably should get a tutor, but I think I've got this. And you, you guys know the pre-med star motto is, you've got this. People will message me, and I message them back on the site, and the motto is, you've got this. But at the same time, sometimes in order for you to get this, you've got to get help from somebody else. You've got this if you go off and get a tutor, right? So don't be overconfident because that is a very easy way to knock yourself off. All right, so I think I am going to try to run through all five of these really quick because I think these are all important. I don't want to leave anything out this week. I want to make sure you guys get all this. Number three, something that you guys see, you know, I write blogs on it. There's a video on YouTube about this. Got a lot of views and and something I talk about all the time, but it's lack of discipline. Lack of discipline. And in, in the book, Pre-Med Monday, is one thing I talk about. I say the question that a lot of people ask me is, what is the key to success as a pre-medical student? Well, the big secret is you have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. Just the other day, somebody, um, one of my good friends, he's a guy named Ernest. He's out in St. Louis. We went to college together. Just the other day, he sent me a text message. And, you know, keep in mind, I started college back in 2002. So he sent me a text message. He said, man, Dale, since the day I met you, I've always known you were somebody of discipline. This is just out of the blue. He's just telling me this. He said, I've always known you were somebody of high discipline. That's important. And that's the reason I'm telling you that is because you can look at a lot of people in life and tell how disciplined they are. Just have a conversation with them for 30 minutes and you can immediately tell if this is a disciplined person or not. And disciplined people tend to do a lot better in life. Disciplined people tend to do a lot better in life, okay? And the lack of discipline is one of the things that will prevent you from becoming a medical doctor because you have to be disciplined in your study, disciplined in your exercise, disciplined in your faith, disciplined in your diet. All of these things matter. Most doctors, the vast majority of doctors are disciplined at a certain level that a lot of other people aren't. And the reason is because you have to be. You have to be disciplined to do well on these tests, right? As a pre-med, you're going to take the MCAT. When you get to med school, you're going to take USMLE Step 1 and Step 2 or the COMEX exams. Then when you become a physician, you're going to take your board exams. These things all take discipline to study for. They're not easy tests. And on top of that, when you're actually taking care of patients, you have to be disciplined to do the right things when you're taking care of patients. If I'm doing a, a bronchoscopy on one of my patients, bronchoscopy is the procedure where I take a camera on a scope and I go down inside patients' lungs and I look around their lungs. I have to be disciplined in every single step to do the stuff right. From the get-go in terms of cleaning the equipment for the procedure to calling a timeout before the procedure starts. When I get inside the airway, you got to check the anatomy. So many things you have to do to be disciplined. And when you're taking biopsies and cutting on the patients and things like that, you have to be disciplined in every single step. Discipline is critical, and that's something you want to learn now at an early stage, right? You want to start doing the things that it takes right now. So whenever you apply to med school, you know, hey, I was disciplined in doing A, B, C, D, and that's why I can submit my med school application with confidence that I'm going to get in. Number four, I said number four is the second most important one. So I think lack of confidence is the most important reason why students don't get into medical school because, you know, I've been seeing that for the past 10 years now, if not more, where students come to me and I could just tell a lot of them based on the confidence level of who's going to tap out early or who's just going to not make it just because they just have so little confidence. So if you're in that lack of confidence box, please, please, please come talk to me, talk to whoever, talk to somebody and get that confidence level up because that's going to be critical. Okay. But the next one is lack of mentorship. That's the second most important thing. I believe why students don't get into medical school, lack of mentorship, right? Nobody becomes a doctor without help from other people. You have to have help to get to become a doctor or become anything big in life. NBA players, any engineers, lawyers, everybody. You have to have a mentor if you want to do something at the next level and do it well. Mentorship is so key. And the reason it's important is because the quickest way to become successful, the quickest way to figure out how to do something, I should say, is by asking somebody who's already done it. If I go in and I say, hey, I want to build this house, and I don't ask anybody, I don't look at any resources, I just go up there and start building the house, it's going to be easier or harder for me to build that house without asking somebody Versus if I go to somebody who's a big time builder and say, hey, how do you build that house? Can you show me? Of course, when they show me, it's going to be much easier. 
So a lot of pre-medical students don't have mentors. And again, that's why I wrote the book Pre-Med Mondays to give mentorship through the book. And the reason why we do this podcast is so I can talk to you guys and tell you guys things that I think are absolutely critical. And lack of mentorship is one of those things. So please, 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 if you don't have one, go ahead and find a mentor. Go ahead and find a mentor. And I'm sure in one of the later weeks, we'll talk about mentorship some more. As a pre-medical student, one of the easiest ways for you to figure out the next steps to be taken is to have somebody who's already done it tell you how to do it. So go find the medical student. Go find the young physician. Go find a tenured physician. Go find somebody who's already done it and let them tell you how they navigated the system. Mentorship is so critical. It's essential, okay? Essential. And the fifth one in the book is lack of resources. Obviously, there's going to be certain things that just take resources to accomplish. When you're in college, you have to be able to buy your books. First of all, you have to be able to pay your tuition to even go to college. You have to be able to buy the supplies for your lab. When it comes time for MCAT, you have to be able to buy study equipment, right? There's a lot of free stuff online, but you know the reality of the situation is a lot of times you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. There'll be tons of free stuff, but by and large, free stuff, even though it might be great, it's not oftentimes not going to give you that same quality as some of the other stuff you pay for. And it might be unfortunate, but that's the way the world works. Some people just have more resources than other people. If you're able to take a one-on-one MCAT prep course by one of the best MCAT teachers in the world, you're probably going to do better than somebody who can't afford to take a prep course. You're probably going to do. That's not necessarily the case, though. There's some of the people who go into it by themselves and still knock it out the park. But I'm just saying, if you have somebody who is an excellent teacher and you have the resources to pay for that, yeah, there's, there's a good chance you're going to do better. Very good chance. So lack of resources slows you down. But here's what I say about that in the end. That is not an excuse not to be successful. Because if you have a lack of resources, there's a certain element of it. In, in the year 2018, you know, 2019, 2020, this upcoming years that we're coming to, lack of resources is no longer an excuse. It will prevent you from getting to medical school, but it's not an excuse because you should be able to get the resources now. You should be able to get the resources. The internet's out there. You can find so many things on the internet. There's scholarships out there, right? All these big test prep companies, a lot of them offer tuition assistant programs to help you get into your courses. You have to be resourceful in finding these resources. So don't let lack of resource be a big thing, all right? So let me start wrapping up here. But again, I want to say the two things I'm going to harp on, reasons why students don't get into med school. Number one, lack of confidence. You have to believe you can do it. Say it. Say, I can get into medical school. Go ahead and say it. If you're in a room by yourself, don't be ashamed. Just say, I can get into medical school. Say, I can become a medical doctor. You have to believe it. There's nothing wrong with standing in the mirror and talking to yourself. You have to believe that you can do this. Be confident. Build yourself up to that level so you can get there. And the second thing is mentorship. Mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. That's probably one of the biggest things that I'm always harping on. Is because life becomes so much easier when you're trying to do something with somebody who's already done it. When they're telling you how they did it. So let me grab my book one more time. This week's challenge is very simple, right? And this actually goes with the points that I made about being overconfident. So this week's challenge says, what could you use help with? Ask someone to help you. Pretty much what I'm saying is, what is something that you think you could use help with? Don't be too confident about it. If you think you could use help with it, don't have too much pride. Go ask somebody for help. That's your week's challenge. Find one thing you say, hey, you know, I could do a better job with this. Let me ask somebody to help me. Very easy. Very easy. But I want you to be able to overcome this barrier of not knowing how to ask for help for things, okay? And all of us have that barrier. There's, always, there's something that all of us are ashamed or too proud to ask for help in. What is it for you? Go ask for help. All right, then, family, that's a wrap for this week. And next week, we'll be talking about reasons why it's important to choose your friends wisely. Believe it or not, the friends you have have a significant impact as to whether or not you'll make it as a medical doctor. Please remember to subscribe to the Pre-Med Mondays podcast on iTunes or Google Play podcast. I know a lot of you guys listen to it directly on the Pre-Med Star site, but please make sure you subscribe to it as well. That helps us in terms of getting some ratings and actually helping get this out. Tell your friends about it too, of course. Just forward them the podcast and share it with your other pre-med friends. And of course, as always, if you have any questions for me, I'm wide open. You know where to find me. I'm on premedstar.com along with thousands of other pre-medical students. So go ahead and send me a message there and I'm more than happy to help you guys however I can. Love you guys and I will see you on Pre-Med Star. Bye.